Good morning, everyone. Thank you so much for coming out to Penn State Brandywine's very first virtual accepted student day. My name is Nicola DeFranzo Heitzer, and I'm the Director of Enrollment Management here at Penn State Brandywine, and we are so excited you're here with us today. I know this isn't what any of us really were hoping for. We were hoping to be on campus and getting to see you and your families. It is really our favorite day of the year, and we were pretty bummed when we found out that we had to do it virtually. But you know what? We're here, we're with you, we're excited you guys are here. We welcome all of our future Penn Staters. And um, we've got a great program for you today. A um, Couple of things I wanted to let you know, we've got a wonderful group here to, to go over and answer all your questions and a great presentation for you in different sessions. We've got our whole admissions crew here, really excited to talk with you. Um, we have our counselors that work with freshmen as well as transfer students. We have our wonderful director of financial aid. We've got a terif our terrific director of residence life and housing. They're so excited and standing by to talk with you. Um, a couple of important things for today, just so that you're aware. Um, there are different sessions, as you know, we've got a great faculty panel, a wonderful student panel, and then an athletic session all throughout the day. Um, what you'll use is keep handy that registration that you used, your, where you, how you clicked in today, that email that was sent to you, keep that handy because that's how you're gonna go in and out of the sessions. Um, so we're gonna be on with you for uh, just a little bit under an hour and we're going to uh, be able to be here with you to um, show you our presentation. And then Claire is standing by, um, one of our great admissions counselors and she's standing by collecting all your questions. So a couple of things, we are gonna record this video. So if you think about, oh, you know, somebody asked a great question and I, I forgot what that answer was, we'll have it recorded on our virtual um, on our virtual visit page. So we will have that available for you. Um, and like I said, Claire's standing by with questions. So anything you have, you have a Q&A box down at the bottom. So you can put your questions in there at any time. And when we're finished with the presentation, we will be sure to um, have a formal Q&A session so you get everything answered. Again, we are so excited that you're here with us today. Um, I hope it's gonna be a great day. I hope you get all of your questions answered. And if you don't, we are, we are here. We are all sheltering in place, being safe, working from home, but we are still connected to all of you. And we will, be, continue to be, we will continue to be connected to all of you. So stay safe and stay healthy. And I am going to get our presentation started. So just hang with me for one second and then we're gonna get, we're gonna get started. Thanks again for coming today, guys. Okay, so like I said, we're going to kick it off with admissions, financial aid, residence, life, and housing, and we're going to talk a little bit about our next steps that we have for you. And again, remember, you can answer, uh, ask any questions. So for some of you, we know that some of you have paid your deposit. We know that some of you have not um, paid your deposit yet and have not committed to Penn State. That's fine. So we're going to talk a little bit first off with the folks that have been admitted, have not yet accepted your deposit, that have not yet accepted your offer of admission. That's okay. What do I do next? So what you're going to do is you're going to log on to my Penn State and you're going to pay your enrollment fee for um, the enrollment fee is $230. Um, and you, if you are planning on living in housing, it's a hundred dollar housing deposit. We definitely suggest that a great idea for you is to start making connections. Um, it's really wonderful when you can come on a campus and you can feel really comfortable already. So what we want you to be able to do is um, you'll get an invitation from Claire, if you haven't already, you probably have to join our accepted student Facebook page, the 2020 Penn State Brandywine accepted students page. Now we know that a lot of us who are a little older, a lot older than you incoming students like me, we're the ones using Facebook, not you all. I know what you guys are using. I know you're using Instagram. I know you're using Snapchat. Um, I know that, um, but this is a great start where you can start to connect with each other. And then what you can do is then you'll have the opportunity to, <clears throat> you know, chat with each other and say, hey, here's my Instagram or here's my, here's my Snapchat. And then you can start connecting almost off of the page and online. And that's how those connections really get made. But it's a great start. And it's a great, um, it's really a, it's really a, 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 you know, a great way for you to get started. 
Okay, for those of you that have committed to Brandywine, congratulations, welcome. You are officially Penn Staters and we are so, so excited to have you all as part of our Penn State family. So these are gonna be some of your next steps that all surround new student orientation. So you're gonna take your Alex math assessment you are going to go to that link. So if you have a chance, you know, um, you know, if you got your phones out with you, take a picture of that, that orientation.psu.edu backslash participate. That's where you're going to go to take your Alex math assessment and get your information for new student orientation. You're going to be able to schedule your new student orientation. You'll be sent some things. You'll have some pre homework to do and you will have instructions to submit your immunization records. Um, and every student has to do that. And really NSO is for you to learn everything you need to know about being a Penn Stater at Brandywine. You'll meet with an academic advisor and you'll schedule your first semester classes. I know some of you might have a question about, is it gonna be virtual? Is it gonna be on campus? How are we gonna do these NSOs? We're not sure yet, but we can promise you that you will still work one-on-one -on -one with an advisor. Um, we will make sure that you are working one-on-one -on -one to choose your classes. It might be over Zoom if need be, but we will be there for you. Our academic advisors have been fantastic and they're standing by working with students and taking appointments every single day. And then when we get back to campus, and we're all so happy <laughs> to be back on campus, um, we have a great week um, of things planned for you, starting with Brandywine's Fresh Start, which is for every student, every new incoming student, um, Friday, August 21st, 20, uh, Friday, August 21st. It's your official Welcome to Penn State Brandywine. As you can see, there's lots of fun things going on, lots of important things that you might need. And then after that, they have a wonderful week of welcome planned. Um, this is our student activities, student affairs division. They put on a great week for you all. You see all the fun things that, um, that are happening. You might think, oh, I hope I can go to all of those. What, what about if I have a class? Well, they're all done at, over the time when we have common hour, with the exception of, the, of a dinner and a show on Wednesday. That's an evening program. Um, uh, you know, everything is done during common hour and obviously the Saturday uh, bus trip to Ocean City, that's all day. So we have a lot of fun things planned for you. Um, once we're all back on campus, it really is going to be great. And we can't wait to see you on campus. We, uh, we are missing our students and we're missing our campus. Um, if you have any questions when this is all over with and you say, oh, I should have asked that question or I didn't get that answer that I needed, you can reach out to us at bwadmissions at psu.edu. Um, really easy, email us and someone will get back to you. And even if it's for a different session, like a faculty member, we will send it over to that faculty member. So again, bwadmissions at psu.edu. Now I'm gonna turn it over to Karen Chapman, our Director of Financial Aid, and she is gonna to talk to you a little bit about financial aid. Karen, take it away. Hi everyone, Thank, again, thanks for joining us. I can't believe how many of you are actually taking this time to um, watch all of us today. Um, we really appreciate it. Um, so my name's Karen Chapman, I'm the Financial Aid Coordinator. Uh, Robin Pettiford is a Financial Aid Counselor in the office. Um, we're located in the main building, um, which is the small, um, not the small building, the building right at the front of campus. Um, we're on the first floor. We would invite any of you to just walk in at any time. Um, you know, we don't necessarily take appointments. We'll just see you whenever you walk in. Um, if you call that number on the screen, the 1260 line, that will actually go to um, both Robin and myself. So you will only ever deal with the two of us. Obviously, we can both help you with anything. The BW Financial email that you see there, that comes directly to me. P please, you know, take a screenshot, take a picture of the screen and just get in touch with us anytime with any questions that you might have. Okay, so what does my FAFSA do? Uh, hopefully you've already filled out the FAFSA that did go live on October 1st using 2018's tax information. Um, the FAFSA takes into consideration all sorts of things like how many people are in your household, your income, assets, everything like that. And it goes into a federal calculation to um, create what's called your EFC, which is your expected family contribution. That figure isn't, when you see that figure on the screen, you might see it and think, I can't you know, afford to uh, spend that much on the tuition and everything. That's not what you're expected to pay. That's just what the government has come up with um, you know, to say how much you should be able to contribute. Um, so the FAFSA gives you all of the federal aid consideration, which can include the Pell Grant, which is for high financial need. 
Um, the subsidised loan, which is the loan that the government pays the interest on while you're in school, at least six credits. Um, and the unsubsidised loan, which accumulates the interest from the beginning, um, from when the loans originated. A federal work study um, usually is awarded to high financial needs students. Um, if you put the, um, the option, there's an option on the FAFSA where it says, are you interested in work study? If you did do that and you didn't get work study on your FAFSA, uh, sorry, on your financial aid award, let me know. We do have a wait list. And then in September, that wait list opened up and we send the names up to University Park and they review students to see if they have any um, additional funds. And then, you know, hopefully if you have, if you do get work study, please do apply for jobs. Um, you know, the work study awards are nowhere near as many students who actually want them. So if you are lucky enough to get it, please do take advantage. Um, if there are any other federal grants available, um, you would get, you know, that on your financial aid summary as well. Um, so you might see your financial aid summary in Lion Path. Um, you will see the list of what you've been awarded and that can include the federal grants, the state grant, which is the PA state grant. Um, that's a, that's um, you, it's awarded using the same information that is on your FAFSA. Um, so, you know, hopefully if you're awarded that, any type of grant money doesn't have to be paid back. So, you know, please make sure that you've done the FAFSA before May 1st. That is the state grant deadline. There's no exceptions. Um, you know, please just make sure you do everything on time. Um, if you have done your FAFSA and you haven't got notification that you have got a financial aid award, please get in touch with me. I had this situation just the other day and we have it often. Um, students like, I haven't got my financial aid. It could be something like your social security numbers missing on your admissions application and so we can't link the two together. It could be um, that there's a mistake on the FAFSA or something doesn't add up and it's been like rejected. So then we need to like see what the problem was. But I won't know unless you tell me that you haven't got your financial aid award. So don't leave it. Just get in touch as soon as possible. Send us an email and I'll look into that for you. And then obviously we just know how to fix that. And that could be due to, um, like I said, a mistake, a missing signature, anything like that. Um, if you have any verification items on your to-do list in Lion Path, please take care of them as soon as possible. That will delay your financial aid coming through. Um, it actually disperses into your account and things like that. So please double check, you know, fill out the information and right now upload it into the system. It gives you instructions on how to do that. All right, so big question, how much does it cost to go to Brandywine? Um, just in case you have any additional um, questions about tuition and everything, you could get in touch with the Bursar office. Um, I can try to help as much as I can, um, but they're the ones who obviously deal with all of that. So if you're a Pennsylvania resident and you are commuting from home, your tuition and fees you'd be looking at is $14,460 for the year. So that's only $7,230 for the semester. Now these tuition and fees rates that I'm using right now are based on this year. We won't actually have the correct numbers for the upcoming fall and spring until July. Um, so if you're wondering like, you know, when you can apply for loans and things, you might want to wait just till July till you get the actual figure so you know how much you need. If you're an out of state student, uh, the cost 23,466 and that is for the year as well. Um, so obviously that's what you can expect to pay. Um, room and meals, so the room and meals, if you, is obviously if you're living on campus, the 12,554 is for the year. So it's just over 6,300 for a semester. And th th that figure is actually um, next year's figure. We already have those numbers for you. Um, that's based on the figures that I've given you there is based on the level two me meal plan. If you see on the left of the screen, um, I've listed the three um, meal plans that you can have. It's just the, the middle meal plans, you know, the most common to have, but obviously you've got those three choices there. Um, the non-billable costs, um, I have listed food on there. That's for, again, like a commuter student, really, if they're, you know, wanting to get uh, a meal plan on campus or if you just need to, you know, go and get lunch and everything. So non-billable costs are books, gas, you know, new laptop, anything else. There's an estimate of $6,710 um, if, you, if you're 
you know, obviously going to need all of those things. We're not saying that's how much you're going to, you know, need to pay at all. You pay for what you need to pay for. Um, like I said, gas, any types of supplies, anything like that. Um, and then off campus, obviously a little bit more because, you know, you've got more things to take care of. Um, so when you get your bill, you're going to see your tuition and fees, financial aid. So anything you've been awarded will start to be, um, will start to disperse to your account about 10 days before the beginning of the semester. So you're looking at um, about the middle of August when that will start happening. Um, so, you know, the majority of the time there's a gap um, between the, you know, the financial aid that you've got and the amount of the tuition and fees. Um, so a few ways you can bridge that gap. Number one is the installment plan that we have available. Um, you would enroll that in that through Lion Path, and there is a $45 fee per semester to enroll in that plan. But whatever your balances will get um, divided into four equal installments. So that will be August, September, October, and November 22nd. Just make sure that you're enrolled in that plan at the very beginning of August, just so everything's in place, on time, and everything like that. But if you're not in the installment plan, um, you know, you can pay out of pocket, but if for every time, if for every month that there is a, um, a balance on your account, you're going to get a late fee if you haven't paid it by the due date um, of the, like the 22nd. So just bear that in mind. Um, obviously, we don't want anybody to, you know, accumulate any late fees at all um so the you know you can actually pay um there's a few ways checking account which is like e-check so that will just deduct from your bank every month um debit or credit card now if you do pay this way um even in the installment plan or even just in general there is a two percent fee um, so obviously if you've got a, a big balance and you want to pay it all off just bear in mind that you know that fee could be quite big um, you can also pay by check or cash on campus. Unfortunately, you can't pay by card on campus, but cash or check they will accept. Um, another option you've got uh, to bridge that gap is an alternative private loan. Now that's through your bank, credit union, you know, they do have varied rates. I've heard some really good ones. I've heard some really bad ones. Um, but you ultimately have to go with, with whichever loan, um, loan provider that you you feel comfortable with whichever one's going to be the best for your family we're a non-preferred lender university so if you would call me and say hey which loan should i go for unfortunately i'm not going to be able to advise that we're not able to um so just make sure that you you know do your research um you can go to the link where the the loan info you can go to that and then they've got all sorts of different lenders you can click on them find out their interest rates their requirements you know things like that if a dependent student um, needs to get a loan on themselves, they will need a co-signer. So it will usually come back on a parent or a family member because they're under the age of 24. And in the eyes of the government, anybody under the age of 24 is a dependent student. So just bear that in mind. Um, parents, there's a Parent PLUS loan. Um, you can go to studentaid.gov and you can look at that. Um, if you apply for the Parent PLUS loan, say you need $5,000 to cover you for the year, you'd, uh, sorry, you'd apply for a fall spring loan for $5,000, but you must add 4.236% to that amount because that is an origination fee which will come out of the loan amount. So if you need $5,000 and you don't take into consideration that origination fee, obviously you're going to be short in the amount of money that you actually get and see on the bill. It's a 7.08% interest rate at the moment. So, you know, it's kind of kind of in the middle there. Um, and again, if you decide to go for the parent plus loan, it is a parent loan. The parent is responsible. The parent's got to make the payments. If you want to work out behind closed doors that the student, you know, pays half of it back, you know, that that's entirely up to you. Um, Again, that link on the bottom there is a very good resource. Um, you can compare all of the loans, you know, private versus plus, you know, anything like that. Um, if you have any questions, you know, like I said, email us anytime. Right now, especially email is the best way to get us. We do check the voicemails um, periodically, but obviously um, we're, always, we're at home, we're always on email. Um, 
again, any other questions that you have about anything at all, get in touch with us. Again, you know, that link, um, sorry, the, the phone number and the email, you know, we're there all the time. And then hopefully when we're back on campus, we'll see a lot of you um, coming into the office uh, during the semester. Please don't hesitate. We would rather you ask the same question a hundred times to make sure that you're, you know, comfortable with the answer. So, you know, we're here to help. All right, well, thanks very much. Um, I am going to um, send you over to Elizabeth, uh, who's gonna do the housing and food services. All right, good morning, everybody. I'm really excited to be here. Uh, this is a unique way to speak with you guys, but it's great to get in front of you and start to put um, our face with um, what we do here on campus. So if you have any questions, you know who to come and find. Um, I am the Director of Housing and Food Services. My name is Elizabeth Kearns. Um, my team is really excited to work with all of our students, both residential students and commuter students. We work with everybody because our offices are the ones that do the IDs, um, as well as feeding the students and housing them. All of our information is listed right here on this first screen, so please make sure that you take a picture of it. The best way to reach us right now is housingbw at psu.edu. Uh, we are all still working the same as everyone else on campus, but we're just not there right now. Um, so you're welcome to give us a call. Just recognize that we might not respond to calls as quickly as we are to email. Uh, I also have listed on here our website, so you can go and see lots of information about food services in our residence hall at Brandywine Campus Living. .psu.edu. And we also maintain a Facebook page and an Instagram account. So um, feel free to check those out at your, at your, whenever you have time to um, see more about what we do. All right, so I, I wanted to put some pictures up here just so you could start envisioning yourself as you're um, planning on coming here to Penn State Brandywine. This is our student union building. It's one of, it is one of the newest buildings here on campus. It's a beautiful LEED certified building. So being sustainable is a really important thing at Penn State. So we were um, excited to be able to have a building that uh, supports those values. Um, the picture on the right is the front of the building. The picture on the left is um, our fireside room right outside of our Blue Apple Cafe, uh, where students can study and learn and spend time together. Um, our dining facility is um, brand new, quite extensive. We have everything from pizza, which is our chancellor's favorite thing, to salads and sandwiches. Uh, we work with both residential students, commuter students, faculty and staff, folks from the community come in um, to buy things as well. So it's a welcoming environment for everyone. So please don't think that if you're commuting that you can't come in here and hang out. It's for everyone to spend time together and uh, work and study and uh, just build relationships with everyone on campus together. So uh, I wanted to include some, um, some faces. So these are our resident assistants. We call them our RAs. There's uh, six of them in the, in the building. And this is from last fall during arrival. They did a dinner where they served it um, as part of welcome, our week of welcome. Uh, so I just wanted to start putting some faces for you because you might recognize some of these students, although a lot of them have graduated. So we're always sad when that happens, but they're a great group of people. Um, so a little bit about food services. Um, once again, the, the location is called the Blue Apple Cafe. We um, focus a lot on making sure that we have good dietary information for all of our guests and customers. Um, we have something called the Real Program, uh, which is focusing on uh, healthy options. We know that students need Snicker bars and Doritos and Pepsi uh, from time to time because it's, you know, school can be stressful some days. But we also want to make sure that we have really good healthy options for our students. So we have a good balance of everything. Um, and all of our menu cards have great information so our students know if it's vegan, vegetarian, if it has any um, allergens in it, those are all listed. We also have a registered dietitian at University Park that we have work with all of our students. So if you do have any particular dietary needs or restrictions that you wanna make sure that we're aware of, you can email the food allergies at psu.edu and we will start working with you soon to go over what our menus are, make sure that you've met the staff and that you are well cared for while you're here at Penn State. Um, we have something called Green to Go. Uh, as I shared a little bit ago, sustainability is a really important thing at Penn State. And so we use a, a container instead of styrofoam or um, plastic or anything. It's a container that you can take with you, eat your food, and then you bring it back and we wash it and we reuse it. So it's a really great opportunity to be um, aware of the environment and taking care of the environment. Uh, we also do something called a food advisory board. My management team meets with students regularly to see how we're doing. What are we what are you liking? What are you not liking? What would you like to see done differently? What are the things that you really love about what we're doing? Because we want to make sure that we're talking with our students and gathering feedback because we're only as good as 
um, the information that we're gathering from our guests. So we, we keep in touch with them regularly. Um, we know that a lot of our students are living with us, so we wanna make sure that the menu stays fresh. So we do lots of different page changers. Um, I know that when we do our crab leg dinner, the students go crazy because they love that night. It's a fun night for them. They get in there up to their elbows with butter and break up the crab legs. Um, we do special things to make sure that, you know, we try new things. Um, we have the Beyond Burger in our operation. So we just wanna make sure that students have a good variety. And then of course, the most important thing to discuss today is the Penn State Berkey Creamery. Uh, we do have all of the creamery products out at our location. We are a supplier on the Eastern side of the state. You can buy half gallons, pints. Uh, we do uh, scoops of ice cream, milkshakes. Um, our very own Jeremy Branch is one of our best customers. He comes in and buys many half gallons at a time. So um, that's one of the reasons we see a lot of guests from the community come in. So uh, we have lots of great things to offer in our food service location. Uh, as Karen shared a little bit ago, you guys saw the cost for the meal plan. Um, I think the most helpful thing for you as you're deciding what meal plan to choose from is on the far right hand side, it says approximate meals per week. So that can help you as you decide which meal plan will be best for you. Any money on your meal plan from fall does roll over to spring. Uh, any money that you don't use at the end of the spring semester, you would lose. You do have the ability to change the level of your meal plan, however. So don't think that if you sign up for a level three that you're stuck with it for the whole semester. You can reduce it to a two or a one, and you can also increase it. So you're not stuck with things um, exactly the way they are. And once again, as I provided our contact information earlier, housingbw at psu.edu, if you have questions about this, feel free to give me a call. I'm happy to assist you with working through how that works. The other thing that I wanted to share is Lion Cash. This is something that all students are, are typically interested in. This is for um, the entire time that you're attending Penn State, it does not expire. It's a flexible deposit account. So once your student receives their Penn State ID card, the account is automatically set up for them. You can put deposits on it from anywhere. You can do a deposit in the middle of the night. Um, students use it to do laundry in Orchard Hall, and I see them putting money on their account at all hours just to make sure they can do laundry. Um, you do receive a 10% discount if you use Lion Cash in our dining facility. The Penn State Bookstore also accepts Lion Cash, so if you're looking to um, have some money for books and you don't want to carry a credit card or a check about, around, this is a great way to load money on your account and not have to worry about it. Um, as I said, it doesn't expire for the whole time that you attend Penn State. And I've provided the link on here. It's idcard.psu.edu. You can do some more research about it. You can also link up a PNC account to your Penn State ID card, and there's information about that on the Lion Cash website as well. So Orchard Hall is um, the other new building on campus. We're so excited to be a residential campus now at Penn State Brandywine. We just we're in the we're at the end of our third year of being residential. Um, once again, as a focus of being sustainability, our Orchard Hall is a LEED certified, so that's a leader in um, environmental and engineering design, and it is a silver LEED. So we're really proud of the sustainability features that this building has. It's very comfortable and very modern, lots of glass, lots of bright spaces. Um, it's very conveniently located on campus. It's right behind the library if you've been to visit already. Um, our students do share a, a space with another student, so everyone has a double bedroom. Um, they do have private access to our bathrooms, which are, we call them spa style. So they're community, but they are individual within that. And um, the building has a capacity for 250 students. It is co-ed. I know that's always a question, is it boys on one side and girls on the other? It's co-ed, but we assign by gender in each bedroom. So these are just some bright pictures of the space so you can see the one on the right is the lobby area and the one on the left is one of our study lounges. Um, there's study lounges on every floor. We recognize that students need to have quiet places to study and the library is not opened 24 seven. So that's all set up for students. Um, it's very, it's very welcoming space. We're really proud of how it's turned out in our design. So this is a student's room. Um, two of our students graciously allowed us to photograph their room. So you can see some of the amenities that the room provides. All the furniture comes in the room. So you have a double stack dresser on each side, uh, a bed that's adjustable. It's an extra long uh, twin. So if you're looking to purchase sheets for the room, uh, it comes with a desk, a chair, a rolly chair. And uh, what you can't see in the picture are their wardrobes. So there's a large closet provided and there's also a micro fridge that comes in each one of the rooms. So the students share a micro fridge. So you do not need to purchase and bring anything like that. 
Um, the facility also includes um, Wi-Fi, so the students all have access to their Penn State internet, and they can also hook up their internet if uh, students are particularly interested in the gamings and things like that. They can hook up to the Penn State network through the ethernet connection in the building. So um, a little bit about some of the conveniences of living in Orchard Hall. It is a living community. So um, in addition to the six resident assistants, as I showed you a picture of a little bit ago, um, there's six of those, there are professional staff members that live in the building. So Residence Life has two adult, their masters um, holding professionals and they oversee the resident assistants and they do programming. They're there to support your student. They will talk to them at two o'clock in the morning. They will give them great advice. They will work with them and they will build community. So we have a wonderful team from Residence Life that support our students 24 hours a day in the building. Um, it's very conveniently located. The, di the dining facility and classrooms are literally right across the sidewalk from where the students are living. We do provide mail services for all of our students that live on campus so they can pick up mail, have packages sent here. Um, we are the number one Amazon place around so students are always ordering things and we drop them off for them. Um, we also do cleaning for our students. So um, we clean the bathrooms and the common spaces. Students do have to uh, take responsibility for cleaning their own apartment. So that's something that they will have to take care of on their own. Um, and then security, which is obviously so important for everyone to make sure that we take good care of our students. Um, the building is card access. It's actually double card access. There's two points where they have to swipe their Penn State ID to get into the building, in addition to the key that they have for their room. And then of course we have our Penn State police that are there 24 hours a day. They um, patrol the place and they are, they are great community partners as well. They get to know our students. They do programs with them to build relationship. Um, they are there to support our students as well as they're away from home and on um, learning and growing at, away at school. So uh, as Karen shared a little bit ago about how much housing costs, it's $3,828 per semester to live in the building. That is a double occupancy. So that is not sharing, it's not having a single room, but that's sharing a room. We have very few single rooms. I do wanna make sure that everybody hears this. I um, mean, most of them are for medical accommodations. So um, plan to have a roommate overall. Um, students do pay a $100 housing deposit when they sign up with their offer of admission. That $100 is part of the total 3,828, so it's not an addition to it. Um, students can accept their housing contract when they accept their offer of admission. And I know many of you have already accepted your offer of admission today. Um, if you didn't sign a housing contract and you want one, just send us an email and we'll be happy to offer you a contract. We do have space still available in the building. Um, but for those of you that are still making your decisions, just know that you can do it all together at one time. Um, once the building does reach maximum capacity, we do open a wait list for students. We did open one um, in middle of May last year. So please remember it is first come first serve. So if you definitely want housing, don't wait too long to make a decision. But just for right now, we are good on space. So don't feel like you have to panic about it. Um, but just don't wait for forever to make those decisions as well. So I just wanted to give you a couple quick screenshots so you knew if you hadn't accepted your offer of admission, this is what it would look like. So this is all part of your accepting your offer of admission page. And you can say on the far uh, left-hand side, yes, I'm interested in living on campus or no. If you say no, it just takes you to the next admission screen. If, say, if, it's a, if you say yes, it'll take you to this next screen um, where it shows you how to actually sign the housing contracts. So you would actually click, I agree to the terms and conditions, and then you sign your name. Some students don't realize this, but this is you actually signing your housing agreement. So there's nothing separate that you would be sent. This is you signing your legally binding agreement to live in uh, Orchard Hall for the fall semester and the spring semester. All right, so what's next? After you've signed your housing contract, you paid your admissions fees, you've been working on your Alex um, test, um, you'll get an email confirmation from us telling you you've signed a housing contract. You can review it at any time by looking at the eLiving website. This is how we manage our contracts. It's eLiving.psu.edu. And um, one question we get a lot is how are roommates assigned? So we assign roommates at random. So you, um, you could request to have someone as a roommate if you know who they are and you can update that in your preferences in eLiving. But most students don't know who their roommates are ahead of time. Um, just to share a personal story, my roommate, my last two year of college, I didn't know her before we were assigned together and she ended up being one of my best friends and the maid of honor in my wedding. So don't go into it thinking that you need to know who your roommate is. Um, sometimes it's the best thing in the world to meet somebody new and they just become a friend for life. That's part of the Penn State experience is making friends for life. So uh, please go into it knowing that you might have a random roommate. Um, one of the things that Residence Life will do with your student is 
Um, they'll sit down and work on a roommate agreement together. So think about the things that are important to you. Um, is having quiet time and study time. Do, when do you want to have friends over? When do you want to do lights out? Um, how much space do you need in the refrigerator? You know, just think through all the things, you know, if you have a sibling that you share a room with, you're probably well versed on this. But if you've had the ability to not have a roommate in your own bedroom, it's something to start thinking through so that you're prepared to um, share a space together. And once again, you can update any preference information um, through May 15th in eLiving. So if you meet somebody through the Facebook shared uh, group that Claire has set up, you could request to be roommates together. And if you're having issues with that, just both of you email us through Housing VW and we'll help you get it set up. So don't, freak, don't worry if you can't get it set up. So assignments and arrival, this is the, what we plan for every year. So uh, students will be able to see who their roommates are after July 13th through eLiving. Um, you can change and make changes to your housing assignment after that until August 1st. So you may have met someone throughout the summer that you want to have as a roommate. You can make those changes. Um, a lot of students start to think about what to pack, what to leave home. You know, as people are thinking about gifts to give you for uh, graduation or as you're, you're planning or maybe grandma wants to give you something. Um, our arrival page is arrival.psu.edu is a great resource for you. Um, please know that we haven't completely updated it at this point. We're still adding dates and changing things, but the information about packing and what to bring and what not to bring is still very accurate. And then of course, the most important thing is what is move-in day? We're so excited for first year arrival day. It will be Thursday, August 20th. It starts at nine o'clock in the morning. We have campus volunteers all day long to help you and your family get settled into your room. It's an exciting day. We plan for it all year. And um, it's just wonderful to, to finally welcome you to campus officially for the school year. So thank you so much for your time today. I appreciated meeting with you. Um, once again, if you have questions, you'll be able to ask them today, or you can send us an email at housingbw at psu.edu. I'm gonna turn it back over to the admissions team. Hi everyone, hello again. Well, that was a lot of information. We hope you are, are happy with the information that we're able to give to you. And now I'm gonna turn it over to Claire. I'm sure she's been uh, taking your questions. So Claire, what do we have? Hello everybody, so glad everyone's here this morning. Um, yeah, we've got a bunch of questions coming in. So I'll just start to go through our list here. Um, the first question is, if I did not, if I was not awarded a scholarship in my financial aid package originally, is there a chance that later on in my college career that I could receive a scholarship? So for example, you know, sophomore year or junior year, is there a possibility? Karen, do you mind taking that one? Yeah, no problem. Um, yes, so at the end of every spring semester, after grades are on and everything, it's usually around about the uh, June time. Um, all students pretty much with above a 3.0 are pulled into our scholarship system. Um, now, each scholarship we have is, um, you know, has donor preferences. So if you are matched with one of those preferences, you know, you could be awarded a scholarship. Um, the amount of scholarships we have for the amount of students we have, unfortunately, if I, I wish I could give money to everybody, um, but basically just be the best student you can be. Um, get involved on campus clubs, organizations, sports, get involved in the community. A lot of the donors want to see a well-rounded student with, you know, other interests outside of, uh, outside of school. Um, there are major specific scholarships. Um, you know, just there's, there's a lot available, um, but just not enough for everybody. So again, just be the best student you can be. Great, thank you so much, Karen. Um, I've got another question. We've got some students on here who are planning to do the two plus two. Uh, Jeremy, would you mind speaking to what the two plus two looks like for a Penn Stater? Absolutely. The two plus two is one of the hallmarks of the Penn State University educational uh, plan. It's where you spend two years at a campus like Penn State Brandywine, and we'd be so happy to have you. And then you complete your degree at our University Park campus. And this is a very popular option. In fact, Half of the students that are currently studying at our University Park campus began their Penn State experience at a campus like Brandywine. Think about that. 46,000 students are at University Park right now, and half of them started at a smaller Penn State campus. And there's really a lot of different reasons for why students choose to do the two plus two. For some of us, 
it just eases our transition into college, right? One of the things you're going to see is it's not just the academic uptick that presents challenges, right? Transitioning into college, but it also sometimes is just being, you know, alone and not having that usual crew that you walk through your high school hallways with. And so having a transition now into a smaller environment like Penn State Brandywine, it's easier to get to know people, easier to get involved. And some students really appreciate that and love the two plus two because of it. For others, it's the financial benefits. I mean, you're saving significant money by coming to Penn State Brandywine for your first two years. And I don't know a parent in the world that would be interested in that. But one of the things I really appreciate about this current generation of students is that they're also thinking about it. So I know many of you that are on this call right now, students, that's something that's on your mind. And the two plus two really lightens your load in terms of college costs of attendance when you come to Penn State. Um, for others of us, the smaller class size is a real, a real thing since we've been five years old, we've enjoyed class sizes of 20 to 25 people. And now all of a sudden, when you go to college, that can really greatly expand. But when you choose a smaller campus like Penn State Brandywine, you're going to see similar class sizes that you've experienced your whole life. So that also eases that transition into Penn State. And by the time you get to University Park to finish your degree, you're now experiencing smaller class sizes there too, right? Because now you're officially in your major and studying those business courses and those engineering courses with the same students of that same major. So those are just some of the, the um, background tidbits about the two plus two is an excellent option for students. Thanks, Jeremy. You never disappoint with your answers. Um, Karen, a financial aid question for you that might uh, affect other families on this call. Um, so this family completed the FAFSA using the 2018 taxes information, but the financial situation has changed in 2019. What can they do? Okay, so yeah, if the, I mean, this is obviously a, a very personal conversation. I'd be happy to go into more depth um, with the family. Um, but basically, if this has happened to you, and it, it does happen, um, you know, there's a job loss between 2018 and 2019, you know, and your income's significantly decreased or if there's been a, a death in the family or anything like that, it can change everything. So what you would do is get in touch with me. I would um, take, you know, as much information as I can. I then pass it on to um, a group of very small people. There's like four people at University Park who will deal with this. And one of those four people will get in touch with you and you would work with that person one-on-one, -on -one, you know, so there's, there's only ever going to be like me and them that would know your situation. Um, and then what they'll do is ask you to provide your 2019 tax information. And then they will look at all the changes and, if they, you know, find a lot of significant changes, then they can actually override 2018's information with 2019 and then hopefully get you more financial aid. Thank you very much, Karen. I think the main thing to note there is just to make sure that you are super communicative with our financial aid office. Yep. They are here to help you. So yep. using the resource. Elizabeth, we're getting some questions about uh, summer living. Um, can you speak at all to if there is any opportunity for students to live on campus in the summer um, or what that looks like? Yeah, absolutely. So we are not offering summer housing at Penn State Brandywine at this time. Uh, we don't typically have our food services opened in the summer and to live on campus we need to make sure that we can feed our students as well. So there hasn't been the demand to have food and housing in the summer at this time. There are campuses throughout the Commonwealth that do offer summer housing. So if you choose to attend Penn State Brandywine for the fall semesters, that doesn't mean you couldn't look at a different location of Penn State for summer classes. Um, we do have summer housing at a number of campuses. So the Barron campus in Erie, the Harrisburg campus, um, and Abington are the three campuses that do offer summer housing. So if you're looking to take courses in the summer, you would have the opportunity to live there and take those classes at that time if you want to make sure that you're not getting behind or you want to take 12 credits during the, sem the semester and do a couple in the summer. There are plenty of opportunities to do that. We're just not doing it at Penn State Brandywine at this time. Thanks, Elizabeth. Uh, somebody had asked a question about um, just to repeat the four times that the installment plan due dates are. Um, so I'll, I'll repeat them really quickly and then I'll go ahead and throw the answer like the link that has the answer into the Q&A box there. Mm -hmm. so for the fall semester, the first installment, if you chose to do the installment payment plan for your tuition, the first installment would be due on September 2nd. 
The second is September 22nd. The third is October 22nd. And the fourth is November 22nd. And again, I'll go ahead and copy and paste that link that gives that answer into the Q&A box. So if you are interested in those um, dates for if you were to do the installment plan, you can go ahead and look there. All right, so the next question. Um, Carrie, could you, somebody had asked, what is line path? It's funny, it's such a lifeline for us, but new incoming students, it's not something that they're working with yet. So can you tell us what line path is? Yeah, absolutely. So yeah, as Claire said, sometimes we take for granted um, some of these names and terms and we just throw them at you, assuming that you know and remember what all they uh, all of them are. Uh, so many of you uh, have gotten emails from me over the past few months about going back into your My Penn State account and updating your self-reported academic record or check your decision. It is available on your My Penn State account. Um, so basically, if you commit to Penn State um, and you become a Penn State student, you then gain access to a um, dashboard, a place called Lion Path. Um, and Lion Path, as Claire mentioned, becomes the lifeline for you. It is where you can see things that are billed to you. You can see holds that you have um, or verifications you need to do for financial aid. You will manage your classes and what you're registered in and your, see your grades um, and everything like that. So basically, what you had before um, with uh, the My Penn State account and having that kind of be your lifeline, um, it's actually going to become um, your new lifeline with Lion Path. So that's really just something uh, that you can kind of keep an eye out for, something to look out for, um, even though that's not something that you're going to be using quite this second, um, but just keep an eye out for that in the coming months. Thanks so much. So I do see more questions coming in here. If we do not hit your question, please know that um, if your name is attached, we'll definitely try to follow up with you and get you that answer. Um, and if it's a very specific question, please don't hesitate to reach out to us. So our email address is bwadmissions at psu.edu. We are always, the counselors are always standing by and waiting for questions. And so please don't hesitate to reach out. Um, I'll just hit one more. And then again, hopefully if you haven't gotten it answered, we will be able to get in touch with you and, and let you know what, what the answer to that question is. So the question was just about orientation again and what the orienta orientation dates will be. Um, and so the dates are actually different depending on different students. There are several dates that you can choose from. And your first step in this orientation process is to complete that Alex math placement exam. And once you do that, you'll start to receive communication about the new student orientation. Um, I would say probably mid-April is when you'll be able to start scheduling for orientation. Um, and at these dates, that's when you will sit and have a one-on-one -on -one with an advisor to schedule your classes. So again, if you did have any questions that we didn't answer, bwadmissions at psu.edu. Um, and I'll go ahead and pass this along to Carrie so she can prep you for our next session. Awesome, thank you, Claire. So you're gonna be seeing me after each of these sessions. Um, I'm going to help transition us along to the next session. Um, so as you heard from Nicola at the very beginning of this um, conversation, at the beginning of this session, um, you wanna keep that link handy, the link that you clicked into um, when you came into this session. It is the same link the entire time um, that we are here for this four hours together. Um, you will click in uh, just at 11 o'clock uh, will be our next session for our faculty members are gonna be joining us, which is super Super exciting because they are so excited to chat with you. Um, just a reminder, if you either need to step out for that session and you won't be joining us for that one, at 12 o'clock we're going to be having some of our Lion Ambassador students um, that they will be able to chat with you as a panel. Um, and then at 1 o'clock we're going to have athletics speak with you as well. And that is not just um, for students that are currently recruited student athletes. If you are interested in playing any sport on campus, uh, even if it's at like the intramural level, like you stink at volleyball like I do, but you might want to play on campus at some point for fun, um, definitely feel free to check out that athletic session. Um, again, it's not just for recruited athletes. Um, so all the sessions we have coming up, um, I'm going to be helping transition us along to them. Um, so just uh, a couple of reminders, if you are not going to be staying with us at this point, this was the only session you were in. Thanks for joining us. We appreciate having you this morning. Um, we want to remind you that you saw in the agenda when you registered, um, hopefully you noticed that we have our virtual tour. No, our tour guides can't take you on physical tour on campus right now, but we have put together an awesome virtual tour that we want to make sure that you check out. Um, so please do uh, check that out, whether you're heading out now or sometime a little bit later today. Um, it is a slightly sunnier day on that 
uh, virtual tour than it is right now here in Philly. Um, but definitely make sure to see that uh, at some point. We have that prepared for you. Um, but again, we're going to duck out now um, because we want to make sure that we get the next panel ready for you with those faculty members. Um, and again, thank you so much for being with us this morning on this panel. Um, we hope to see you joining us in the next few minutes um, and we'll see you very shortly. Thank you. <laughs>